Four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Welcome everybody to my favorite game of all time. Uh, so, quick thing about this game. Uh, this is a PlayStation 1 game from 1999. Uh, it was pretty popular in Japan. Uh, it's mainly a game about a 10-year-old boy traveling through time catching monkeys with a magical net. So, it's pretty fun. <laughs> Good concept, you know. Uh, but uh, before we do anything, uh, let's introduce the people on the couch. So, uh, if you guys want to introduce yourself. Sure, I'm uh, Skateman Tatuti. I'm Orsa. I'm Hornlets. I'm Squarespace 225. Yeah, so uh, to give a brief uh, storyline of how this story goes in this game, uh, Spectre is a monkey who was being raised in a theme park, and he, st he got a hold of a super intelligence helmet that uh, the professor was making. And that gave him the idea to also use the time machine that the professor was making and go back in time. So he made duplicates of all of the super intelligence helmets and gave them to tons of monkeys to send them back in time to take over the human race so that apes could be the dominant species. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm a 10-year-old boy going through time with a, with a time net to capture those monkeys and get Spectre's helmet back. So, yeah, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple, pretty simple game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one thing to note about the category, he is doing all monkeys, but he is not going to be catching all of the monkeys in any of the levels at first. This is because there's a hard cap on how many monkeys you can catch on your first visit, and it's always lower than the total number of monkeys in each level. So he is going to be having to revisit each of these levels. Yeah, this category, uh, it's the second most popular category in this game. And uh, it's definitely had a lot of revisions to the route in the last couple months, just because there's been more focus on the category. So uh, there will just be a lot, of, a lot of this, pretty much, <laughs> just going through, you know, catching a couple monkeys. Uh, the, real, the real fun part is around 10, 12 minutes into the run, where we'll start getting some gadgets uh, that will speed up the run. So yeah, it's... Uh, Right now, it's just pretty much just going through, uh, catching the monkeys in the fastest way we can while running. So, uh, right now, another thing about this game is that uh, we are slowly traveling through time. So, if you guys haven't noticed, we are in the dinosaur age right now. So, you'll see, you'll see some dinosaurs in a second. But uh, we're going to slowly travel through time. It's almost like we're chasing Spectre through time. Uh, but we got to start in the way ancient past to, uh, you know, start where he first sent the monkeys, I guess. Uh, so this catch, you, there's a monkey in this egg, but you can just kind of just jump on him and catch him. So this is the first dinosaur we get to see in the run, I think. Yeah, the routing of this category makes it really interesting. Uh, you'll notice Eid ran past a monkey and didn't catch it. Oh, yeah. uh, the, the concept of having to revisit every level means that a lot of the time you'll have to route in certain monkeys that'll be faster when you have certain other gadgets later and remove some. So it's a very interesting speed run. And the general idea for most levels in this game will be to basically go as far into the level as you can and catch the furthest monkeys for the first visit and then come back and get the closer monkeys for the later visits, just so that you don't have to kind of backtrack and go the way that you've already gone before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's going to play a huge part in this next level, because this next level, even though it's only the fourth level in the game, it's one of the bigger levels in the game. So there are tons of different routes that we could choose here. And uh, hold up. Yeah. so I'm actually going to do a backup route here that is more marathon safe. Uh, so I'm going to catch an extra monkey in the first room that will allow me to skip a monkey if he gives me bad luck. He'd also just picked up a new gadget called the Monkey Radar that <laughs> shows you where the monkeys are, but obviously that's not going to be very useful in a speedrun. But before you get each gadget, you have to go through a training to teach you how to use it, and they're unskippable. So 
And unfortunately with that training room, uh, the location of the three monkeys is random, so you kind of just have to play it by ear, figure out which combination you have, and go through it as fast as you can. So I notice every time you're catching the monkeys, you're always switching to another item. Can you explain to the viewers what's going on there? Yeah, uh, so after you catch a monkey and swing your net, uh, there's a little animation that will play of Spike picking up the net. So I just switch to a different gadget to cancel that animation. Uh, it just saves, you know, half second each time you do it. Uh, so it saves a lot of time throughout the run, so we do it pretty much everywhere. Now, right there, he just caught a monkey that was down below um, by a UFO, actually. Uh, that's actually kind of a luck-based catch. Um, we, it's been, it's a lot more consistent now, but it's still kind of random. If the guy notices you, he can go and jump into the UFO, and then you kind of just have to skip him because it, it takes way too long to get him out of the UFO. And that's kind of a really bad thing for this level. It makes the routing for this level a lot worse. Because, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is fun. <laughs> Fun times. Yeah, it's possible, you, yeah, it's you possible one to cycle. one cycle that uh, that fight if you go fast enough there, but it's yeah. it's pretty difficult to yeah. do. And you have to be standing in the right spot as well. Because mm -hmm. he has a little wind attack that can blow you backwards. And, uh, oh, yeah. love that. Uh, it also did a minor sequence break in this level called a slope jump. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a kind of a weird mechanic where if you walk slightly up a slope and then jump, you can get a lot more height depending on the, ste the steepness of the slope and how far up you walk and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So he used that to skip to a part of the level he wasn't quite supposed to be at yet. Yeah, usually you, uh, you would go through that water area that you just saw at the end there, and uh, you would have to go through the entire area and uh, do a little paddle boat section and dodge some electric fish and such. It's actually really fun, but we don't have time for that. I don't know, it kind of controls really weird. Yeah, I, I find yeah. it so fun. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first very hard level in the game. Uh, there's one, the mo most of the level is easy, but there's one monkey that can uh, kind of ruin everything. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll point it out when I get there. Uh, pretty much he's going to shoot rockets at me, and he's got a button that can activate some wind uh, that can push you back. So hopefully I can catch him without too much trouble. So one thing I want to point out right here is that, oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, that's right. These, uh, these jumps that he's doing over here, normally you actually wouldn't be able to make these jumps, but by doing a bit of tech called a neutral double jump, we can make these. Basically what he's doing is he's jumping and then releasing the analog stick, jumping again and then pressing the analog stick again. Oh my uh, gosh. <laughs> uh, uh, so what happened there, uh, I accidentally dropped the neutral, and so I just did a normal double mm -hmm. jump. Yeah, so uh, that so basically yeah. shows what happens when you do a normal yeah, double jump. Yeah. You lose all of your momentum. <laughs> yeah, these jumps are pretty difficult. Yeah. Yeah, the first monkey in this stage you might have seen also shows off sort of a new mechanic. Based on the color of the pants of the monkey, that influences their behavior. That first monkey had dark blue pants, which means he's extra vigilant. So you'd had to crawl up to him to make sure he doesn't get away. Yeah, if he sees you, it's really not fun. <laughs> Yeah, you'll see Eden Abelot do um, movements with the D-pad to change the camera. That reduces lag in a lot of spots. There's some spots that are really heavy on lag, so just by shifting the camera, it saves quite a bit of time. Yeah, just even a couple of years ago, camera strats weren't nearly as uh, obvious and prevalent throughout the run as they are now. We do a ton more. We pretty much are always doing something on the D-pad at this point. So this is... This is the monkey that I'm really hoping goes well. Good luck. Yeah, Thanks, good luck, man. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't do the one pattern. Oh, he might do it. All right, we're fine. Nice. nice. Sick. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, so with that monkey, there are a couple patterns he can do where he can just make a beeline straight for the button. And when that happens, it's pretty rare that you can catch him. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the good luck is just to, if he shoots missiles at all, uh, it's usually pretty good. You can just jump and get the missiles to sort of miss you, and then you can go and catch them right away. Mm -hmm. And that's a fairly new strat, uh, jumping to dodge the missiles. That's probably within the last year or so. Yeah. It used to be much, much, much harder. Yeah. So uh, next, we're going to get a 
the, the first useful gadget that we get in this game, besides the water net, which isn't really a gadget. Uh, this is the slingshot. So normally, you would just use the slingshot to you know, hit things from a distance. But uh, in this game, there's a fun little glitch, which we call infinite jumping. <laughs> so you can pretty much sequence break the entire game with infinite jumping. And it really makes the run interesting. Because it opens up the options for so many new routes in so many different levels. <laughs> makes the game more fun, in my opinion. Yep. Basically, what's happening with the infinite jump glitch is he's jumping and then flicking the, uh, the analog stick back so that the, uh, it doesn't like, fully go out into the shooting mode, but it's, it, it like, activates but doesn't quite. And that sort of resets Spike's standing position. And so it lets you jump even though you're in midair. Yep. And you can just keep doing that as long as you want. Mm -hmm. yeah, I assume the developers coded it that way because they assumed that if you were pulling the slingshot back at all, you'd be on the ground. So you might as well just ground you. So then you can just jump again. I think, I'm pretty sure every ape game has a glitch very similar to this mm -hmm. one, actually. Yeah, all three of the main yeah. ape games have yeah, like an infinite ones. jump or something. Right here, there's a pretty cool out of bounds. Oh, I couldn't strat. see anything there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, this is the first time you see it, but the terrain out of bounds is very weirdly designed. Like, some spots it almost seems intended that you can walk out of bounds, whereas some spots there's like just infinite fall pits placed randomly. That bird also dropped an explosive pellet. The slingshot has three different types of ammo. The normal, which is you have infinite of, the explosive rounds, and then the homing rounds. Uh, the explosive and the homing are both going to be really useful later on, so we'd like to stockpile them as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And that bird is just like kind of in the way, so we like to uh, like to get an extra one from him. There aren't the next time we'll get extra explosives is uh, the third to last level, I think. Second to last level. Second to last level. Yeah. So this monkey right here, you actually aren't supposed to be able to get until you have a gadget from way later in the game, like one of the last few levels. But because we have the infinite jump glitch, we can just go out of bounds and the ceiling isn't there, so mm -hmm. we can just drop down and catch him. Mm -hmm. And the out of bounds, uh, all the floors in that out of bounds area are super fun. There's just like a bunch of like stepping stones and stuff just blocking your way. So, oh, these. Uh, uh, Orsa, you want to explain what these are? Yeah, so there's between the 6th and 7th, and I think like the, I don't know, when's the, the last one happened? Uh, after Hot Springs. Yeah. yeah. So m much later on in the game, there's these races with Jake where you're just doing an obstacle course, basically. If you win, you get five Spectre Coins, but we don't need any Spectre Coins for anything, so... They're totally you optional. You can just pause and exit. Are you kidding? They unlocked the most fun mini games I've ever played. <laughs> it's a speed run. <laughs> Hello? So yeah, right here, there's also an interesting out-of-bounds <laughs> strat. You don't even need the infinite jump glitch to get that one. It's just a little bit of bad placement with the mailbox there. Yeah. It is pretty precise, though, that it, double, yeah, the double jump precise. you need to get mm -hmm. out. You yeah. need a good yeah. angle to mm -hmm. come at the wall. Yeah. So now we have uh, a new gadget, which is really what makes this game fun, in my opinion. Uh, this is the Super Hoot. So you're going to use this pretty much everywhere for the rest of the game. Uh, it's, it just essentially doubles your movement speed. It's, you just spin the analog stick, and then you just go for it, you know? So this game is all about going for it, so. Yeah. <laughs> The annoying part of the super hoop is that, like the neutral double jump idea, if you jump out of it, it resets your momentum so you don't carry the speed from the hoop. However, if you press the hoop button, which Eid has on X right now, and also the jump at the same time, you do what's called a boost jump, and that lets you maintain your momentum from the hoop through the jump. Yeah. And then you can also chain that into an infinite jump chain, and it, it just looks really cool. It goes fast, and mm -hmm. it's... It's definitely the movement of this game is what makes it a really cool speed game. Yeah, absolutely. And the premise. I like catching monkeys as a 10-year-old boy with a magic net. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so from here on out, we are starting to move forward in time. We're still kind of in the dinosaur age, I think, because uh, the next level after this one has, they call it a goblin. I'm pretty sure it's just like a dinosaur. It's just a, it's just a huge dinosaur. So this is kind of an, a water world, so we're going to be doing a bit of swimming in the next level or so. And there are sharks everywhere now. They don't like to actually eat us, they just like to threaten us. 
Yeah, they kind of just swim in their own little area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the one that the monkey was on sometimes hits you, but the other guy just yeah. ignores you. This monkey coming up right here is really volatile. He sometimes just he sometimes <laughs> just wrecks you, and it's yeah. It, yeah. If I've you don't catch him right away, he just likes to destroy you. He <laughs> has a machine gun, he has rockets, and he has bombs, and he just doesn't like people, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he just, yeah. He's not a fan of me. Yeah, you didn't have a chance to shoot anything there. That was a very nice catch. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. <laughs> so next up, uh, there's a. There's a very, very important and very large trick in the next level. Uh, it saves quite a bit of time, but if you miss it, it loses quite a bit of time. Uh, it's not super hard, so I'm really hoping that I don't miss it, but uh, there's always a chance. So we've gone through many different forms of the route in this level, uh, but in the end, we ended up finding a strat that is pretty much doing a blind jump into the abyss. Uh, and you just have to hit a loading zone that's super far away. But uh, yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's you're, not as bad as you're intended to be fighting some tentacle mid bosses in this stage to open up more different pathways to get through. <laughs> but hopefully, we'll be hitting ooh, the out of bounds ooh. here. <laughs> Those guys like to double team you, or quadruple team you. Nice. Oh my gosh, that was really close. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that, that germ was coming for me. <laughs> so these monkeys are kind of random in uh, where they spawn. They can be uh, on the right side or the left side or wherever they want, pretty much. Uh, so there's going to be a little mini boss coming up after I catch this, some monkeys over here, if I can. Oh boy. Ooh, this guy's mean. Uh -oh. oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a little mini boss coming up here, which is pretty fun actually, especially casually. So he's just going to drop some tentacles and I have to eliminate them and then... Uh, I think you're supposed to do this a couple times uh, normally, but you can actually do enough damage to the boss in the first cycle where you can kill him on the first drop just by spinning. Yeah, this boss doesn't have nearly enough health. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'd be better if he had like 10 or 12 health. So, uh, now that that level's done, we're gonna have a couple easy levels in a row. So uh, now would be a good time to read some donations. Definitely. Um, I have $10 from Anonymous who says, long time watcher, first time attendee. It's been a great time so far. This donation should be the first of many. Good luck to Eat Knob and all the runners. We have $50 from Austin who says, shout out to the loud hype man in the crowd. We love you. <laughs> so uh, real quick, we are now in the Ice Age. Uh, so there is going to be woolly mammoths and snow and all that fun stuff all over the place. Now, oh, that was, okay. Yeah, that strat that he just did right there is actually kind of precise, where he uh, jumped onto the stick that's in the water there. If you fall into the water, it's, it acts basically the same as uh, lava or any, real, any, yeah, just basically lava, where you'll land it and then you'll like jump out and you'll get hurt and it's kind of annoying, but, you know, he nailed that strat. <laughs> yeah, so. the stick strat is really nice because it lets you catch a pretty early cycle on the mammoth. Otherwise, that monkey will fall like, much further off to the left, which mm. loses time. Yeah. yeah, that's actually my favorite level in the game. The mm. time attack of that level is really, really fun. And I've always just loved that level. That one and the previous one, Dexter's Island. They're my two favorites, casually, and speedrunning. So this level also has, uh, this level in uh, the Any% percent run has a bunch of different routes that you could do. Uh, in the All Monkeys run, there's basically one and uh, there's going to be some fun glitches at the end. Uh, and now we have a new gadget, which I will be using throughout this run. Uh, not too often, but occasionally I'll pull it out for some help. Uh, this is the intended way of gaining uh, vertical height in this game. 
Uh, it's called the Skyflyer. So it works just like the Super Hoop. You just uh, spin the analog stick, and you'll shoot upwards. It's pretty fun. Adds a lot of fun tricks to this game. So Frosty Retreat, this level is very cycle-based, especially inside this cave here. There's stair cycles you want to catch, and there's also snowball cycles that you're going to want to avoid. Also the, the spike cycle the right The spikes here. as well, yeah. Yeah, we have to wait for these spikes a little bit. Yeah. Because they will smack you right in the face, and that's yeah. no fun. Conveniently, though, waiting for those spikes puts you on a really good cycle for everything, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh nice. Oh. <laughs> that was that was a little sketchy. <laughs> so those are the enemies that drop. Oh, they drop uh, the guided pellets. And yeah, they always drop. I think two. Uh, th one. They can oh, drop more uh, than one, but no, give me one. They second. always drop one. <laughs> yeah. So messing up in this uh, room is a little bit risky. Um, there's that one monkey down there in the center of the screen. Uh, can yeah, go run one. into the UFO, and if he does that, yeah, it wastes a lot of time. So. Yeah, you know, you don't finish that one. Yeah, I, I got, I got lucky that I realized that I failed it quickly enough. Yeah. Uh, that I could correct my mistake. So this is a new glitch. Uh, this one is less than a year old. You can, you can do that. <laughs> Just jump through the wall because it's super fun. Uh, that was uh, Dark Venom who found that trick. Yes. It's very useful. It saves a second or two, and it looks cool. So. Yeah. Thought I'd try it out. Oh, and also. Uh, uh, I know it's the middle of the run, but uh, quick shout-outs to Flurgundy because he provided the controller and the game for this run. So huge, huge shout-outs to him. Yeah, and they were, it was a brand-new copy of the game and a mm -hmm. brand-new controller, so yeah, he's, yeah, huge shout-outs to him. He's awesome. <laughs> so this is also one of my favorite levels. Uh, it's a little laggy, but uh, other than that, I think this level is super fun. This is essentially the level designed for vertical height. So this is where the Skyflyer, your Skyflyer skills are really put to the test, is in this level. Uh, yeah, there's just a bunch of hard stuff to test your, your skills. Yeah, this level's an absolute nightmare without the infinite jump, but with the infinite jump, it's not <laughs> at all. <laughs> you just skip pretty much everything. Oh my gosh. Oh. Nice. <laughs> nice save. <laughs> so yeah, that's one of the biggest uses of the Skyflyer in yeah. in speedruns is if you accidentally get hit or something or you fall, well, I guess falling off doesn't work, but if you jump in the wrong direction, you can just use it to save yourself without dying. And it's, I mean, I should use it more, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super useful. There are a couple glitches that you can only do with the... Uh, well, not glitches. There's a couple sequence breaks that you can do only with the Skyflyer. But just in general, it's just really good for, you know, saving yourself if you make a mistake. It's very useful get it. Uh, now would be another good time for yep. donations. All right. Um, I actually just have a quick announcement. Um, so Games Done Quick is now accepting bits during SGDQ. Uh, oh. For each bit that Games Done Quick receives, uh, we will give Doctors Without Borders one cent during SGDQ. And just a reminder, um, all the bits that come in uh, goes towards the Sonic Generations Blindfolded Green Hill Zone run. Uh, currently, it stands at 263,092 out of the 500,000 needed, so go ahead and keep bringing those in. So right here, we're entering, I believe it's the medieval era yep, of, like the, yeah. of the Shogun Japan time, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. So like right here, we got a nice temple coming up. Mm -hmm. um, These are all super fun levels. Yeah. This is the best catch in the game right here. Yeah, triple catch. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I apologize. <laughs> that was close enough. That was, that was close enough. Yeah. You got two. Almost got it. So down here, I don't know why there's lava down here, but uh, underneath this temple in the middle of <laughs> like Japan, there's just a little area down here with some lava and some uh, huge statues. So it's actually very difficult, this area, casually. Uh, there's a huge uh, platforming challenge down here with the Skyflyer that is super fun, but it's quite a challenge. Yes. In speedrunning, it's not as hard, though, because we can... Uh, you don't really skip anything in speedrunning, but since we have the boost jump, we can catch that monkey down there, and uh, it's just a lot easier. 
So this next level uh, is the next big luck section, kind of. Uh, we can lose around 10 seconds if we get bad luck. Uh, you can lose more if you play bad and get bad luck, but hopefully I don't do that. And we're going to skip some monkeys at the beginning here, too. There are uh, two monkeys off to the right that we'll be going catching later. Uh, this level's super fun, though. Yeah. Especially for new players, this is considered to be one of the harder levels in the games. There's just a lot of sections of just infinite jumping over long pits. Yeah. This is the luck room. So hopefully I catch them all at the gong. Uh, I got two. Maybe one, two. All right. And yeah, the then... Best. Oh, where is he going? That's, that's pretty, that's pretty much really perfect. Good. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's pretty good. It is possible to get a triple catch right at the gong, but that is pretty rare. Um, it's I've only gotten it twice, I think. And yeah, it's not it's, common at all. Yeah, it's a little bit more common now, but uh, especially back in the day, it was a super rare thing. Because now we go a little bit to the left there, which helps just a wee bit. So right here, this is another monkey you're supposed to use a later on gadget to be able to get, but you can actually just sort of clip the like clip the slingshot through the wall a little bit and shoot the monkey through it, so then he just notices you and runs out. Hmm. Yeah, the slingshot, when you hold it out, it extends slightly further in front of you and lets you go right through the wall. Yeah, I think that's the only uh, monkey in the game that you can do that with. Yeah, I'm I think pretty so. Pretty sure. So something about that wall is thinner than the rest. And this room is really... Uh, Kind of annoying. The camera's gonna shift right away here mm -hmm. in like this really dumb direction. <laughs> it, it's oh. <laughs> yeah. It thinks you're supposed to be coming a different from a different side. Yeah. So that's another monkey that can hop in a UFO if you let him get yeah, away. Cool. Yeah. This monkey, this catch is kind of fun. Whoop. Oh, you missed it. <laughs> All right. All okay. Right. That guy, if he gets away, he will. I don't know how, he becomes Spider-Man for a second and he will climb up the wall, actually. <laughs> and then uh, he goes to this area where he becomes an animal and just is impossible to catch, pretty much. Yeah. So this next level, it's uh, the first really long level in the game. So it's going to be around five minutes long and there are 20-something monkeys in it. And yeah. we're just essentially going to go all the way around to Castle. This is also a format change. This is the first level in the game where you don't actually have to catch any monkeys to progress. You just have to defeat the boss. But he's actually going to catch all but two of the monkeys in this level. And that's a really cool change from the any percent route, because the any percent route, you just go, you have to hit this button to open up the boss, and then you, uh, and then you just go fight the boss. But in the all monkeys route, you have to actually catch all the monkeys, and so it actually shows a lot more of the, the level. And the route just works out really well. I just This is probably my favorite level in the, in the speed run. Definitely, definitely, definitely in this route. I like it in any percent, too. Just because, I don't know, don't have to catch monkeys. I don't know, it's pretty fun. <laughs> right here, there's a little uh, out of bounds you can do to skip having to go through the castle normally. Um, you just kind of go through the basement door. Oh. Yeah, you're intended to sort of work your way down and then back up. But here, we can just start at the bottom and then just work all the way up to the top. Save some backtracking. Mm -hmm. Is that the first time in the game we've caught monkeys with the water net? Mm, I think uh, it is. Maybe. Oh, yeah, the training, training room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But but yeah, uh, the water net has a feature where you can shoot a net out in front of you, and uh, you can catch monkeys very easily that way because it has a very wide range, which is super nice and convenient. So coming up here, uh, there's another monkey who can troll you pretty hard if you miss him. Hopefully I don't. Is this guy? Yeah, nice. Okay. So that guy, if you miss him, he will jump in the water and he'll just run all around and he just, he just has a great time. Yeah, he's got this like loop that he goes around the entire room and it's annoying to catch him. So uh, this will be a boss level, actually. There will be a, not a mini boss, but like an actual boss at the end of this level. Well, sort of. Ah, yeah. <laughs> sort of a boss. <laughs> he tries his hardest. Yeah, he really does give it his all. So I give him full points. So this level is uh, very vertically and horizontally based, so it tests a lot of your skills in this game. Like this room, it has a lot of vertical in it. It's got these little slidey slides that you can go down, and you're supposed to take an elevator to the top and start at the top and uh, work your way down, and then you fight a little, a little night boss, mini boss at the end. But we actually come in from the exit, and then we do the room backwards, which is super fun. 
this room is going to have a little lag. So now could be a good time for donations. Yeah. <clears throat> so I have $15 from LaxBro000, who says, Best of luck to the runner, and shout out to my man, Sportsman, on the couch from his friends in Platteville Gaming Association and Spam. We have $50 from Kirath, who says, Love this event and love the cause. Shout out to the Nerf Squad. Save the frames, save the future. So this is the boss, uh, this little gate right here. So you, that is Spectre, and uh, Jake, who is actually your friend, who, uh, he's the one that wanted to race us earlier, who we left his race prematurely. I apologize to him, but uh, we had to do it, you know, it had to be done. Uh, and they, this was an area where you thought you were going to catch him, but then they end up flying away and dropping down this guy instead. So. Uh, what we're doing right here is we are just damage abusing because uh, usually you would have to run around and avoid his lightning attacks and uh, we just, you know, have a fun time instead. Yeah, for whatever reason, if you do two explosives and then two stun club hits, the boss only takes four hits to die and you have five HP, so you can just take the damage abuse, make him stop being invincible and then mm -hmm. hit him. Yeah, because the explosive pellets do one and a half damage, or I guess it'd be three damage, and the uh, stun club only does two. So you're intended to fight him with the stun club, but since we do three damage with uh, the explosive pellets, we can just do two of those, and that would count as three stun club hits. So now we are going to enter a new era. This is uh, the... It's essentially modern day. It, it might be a little bit in the future, but it's, it's essentially future, modern day. But yeah. it? Oh, it's called Futurama, so yeah, yeah, I'm assuming it's in the future. Uh... And this is where the game starts throwing some really hard levels at you. Uh, all of the monkeys in every level from now on are going to be uh, not nice to me. So this is where the speed run starts getting a bit more difficult. And then we'll get a little break on the revisits, since we will have to revisit every single level. Yep. And then this is the RC car. Uh, it's not super useful, but it's going to be nice in a couple spots. Um, you can control it with the right analog stick, and you can call it back to you if you need to. It also explodes, which is going to be handy on a couple boss fights later on. Mm -hmm. It's very good as a weapon. So this level we are going to do backwards, as we do with uh, quite a few levels in this game, actually. Uh, this monkey is fun. Uh, so usually you would come out of this pipe up here that I'm going to jump into. Uh, there's a little pipe down here. And uh, that would be where you end the level. But uh, we're going to actually start here and do this entire sewer section backwards. Yeah, normally you would have to catch, I think it's three monkeys in the first room, mm -hmm. and then they would open up the sewers from a different entrance, and then you'd have to go through all the way. But yeah, we can just skip that or go backwards through it. All right, so coming up is one of the least fun monkeys in the game. Uh, he has a little enemy guarding him. He's right here. Uh, this enemy loves to troll you. I got super lucky nice. here, but uh, that enemy, he multiplies, so even if you attack him, he just like spawns a, b a billion more of himself. You know, so. a, lot of, a lot of beginners get pretty tripped up over that. Mm -hmm. I've lost plenty of runs to that guy before. He's Same here. my favorite monkey in the game by far. Well, there's one later on that's maybe a little worse. Uh, uh, don't even get <laughs> me started on that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a monkey uh, two levels from now that used to be extremely, extremely hard, and I think a lot of people still harbor a lot of resentment against him. But there is a new strat that makes him much less horrible. But, uh, yeah, he still can troll you all he wants if he, if he so chooses. So this next level uh, is going to have... Uh, an another section of fairly difficult monkeys and another mini boss in it. Uh, this mini boss is actually quite a bit more difficult than most of the other mini bosses in this game, in my opinion, at least. Uh, even in the speed run, it's not going to be easy. So, 
But there are a lot of backups if you do fail stuff, so... So these monkeys, these, this monkey and the monkey right here, uh, they would jump into tank mech things. Uh, and there's actually a way to duplicate them if you want. Uh, and there is a setup to duplicate the second one, but there is no setup for the first one. So if you really want like a 105% file, you can duplicate that monkey all day. <laughs> it's, it's really precise. I think it's a frame perfect trick, though. It's... I may have missed something there. <laughs> we won't talk about that, though. Yeah, this guy likes ruining your day sometimes. Yeah, you can catch him through the gate if you go for that. It's really tough and really luck-based, though. Well, yeah, and if you shoot him with an explosive, it makes it a lot more consistent, but yeah. So coming up here is the mini-boss that Eadnob was talking about. It's nope, this one's on the revisit, actually. Oh, uh, This never is mind, one sorry. of them, yeah. yeah. So that one we will fight on the revisit, but uh, usually in any percent we would just catch right. that guy, though. Oh, also, I don't think we ever mentioned this, but he did a thing there where he should have taken fall damage, uh -huh. but he actually didn't because he swung the stun club. If you're swinging a gadget as you fall down, it negates any fall damage you would be taking. Yeah, it works with uh, almost every gadget. It doesn't work with the hoop, but um, or the RC car, but I think every other one works. I think so. I think so. Uh, I guess not the monkey radar. Oh yeah, not <laughs> the monkey radar. Not 100 percent sure about that. Someone Actually, might yeah. have to confirm. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've never touched I've that. I've never yeah. tried. I've honestly <laughs> never checked, but I'm fairly certain it wouldn't cancel fall damage. So this is where the actual mini boss is that we will be fighting, and uh, this one's way harder than the first one because of lag. Yeah, that area. Is really laggy in this. Yeah. So this, this one at whole least. room, there's just a bunch of conveyor belts that are causing lag. I assume that's what's causing the lag. And so this fight is going to be a lot more fun. Oh. So you can get quick hits if you hit him while he's falling, but it's almost frame perfect like that. Nice. Oh, nice. All right. Well, I can't get him that time because he turned around. But uh, two quick hits is pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty fast. Yeah, that's definitely above average. Usually it's zero or one on this guy. On the first one, it's not hard at all to get quick hits. You can get all of them every time. But on the second one, it's quite a bit more difficult. So coming up next is uh, another pretty long level. Uh, this one has another real boss fight in it. Uh, and this boss fight is going to be quite a bit more difficult than, well, not more difficult. It's going to be quite a bit more elaborate than the first one that we did. So it should take around two minutes for just the boss fight itself. So, uh, Horn, do you want to explain the uh, basement catch? Oh, sure. So uh, in the basement of TV Tower here, there's this monkey. He's kind of climbing on, uh, around on this grate that's on the ceiling. Uh, or rather, like, you, you can sort of walk on it because it's like a floor below. And you can actually, uh, if you hit him with some sort of damage source and then switch to your net before, um, like before you land on the ground. Uh, actually, I'll let you see it right here. Right there. So basically, whenever the monkey gets hit, uh, there's one frame where he like pops up into the like into the ceiling to the next floor above, and you can use that one frame there to actually catch him uh, if you do a ground pound and switch to the net on the right frame. It used to be a basically a frame perfect trick, uh, but uh, SSBM stuff, another run of this game, a while ago uh, did some testing and figured out that you could just use the RC car uh, to basically make that frame happen later so that you can you have more time to switch to the net and thus making it uh, like a three or four frame trick so it's a lot more consistent now yeah it's definitely more consistent it's still not beginner friendly but uh it's definitely doable in runs now well before i would argue that it was not doable so those guys uh the reason why i had to wait there is they're on two second explosion cycles so even if you kill him super quickly uh he might give you a bad cycle, uh, depending on how fast you were, and you might have to wait. Oh, I forgot to jump. So this monkey sometimes doesn't exist. Okay, I got lucky there, but uh, sometimes his hitbox doesn't exist until he sees you. So uh, occasionally you'll have to wait for him. Yeah, there are a few monkeys in the game like that. Mm -hmm. Like the one that was on the, uh, the throne in Crumbling Castle. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to wait for him to jump down before he has a hitbox. Yeah. Uh, there's also another one in Crumbling Castle later on that'll... That'll be like that. 
And I think there's another one, the TV Tower one, uh, in this level that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a monkey outside that has yeah, that yeah. same thing happening. In the Magic Punch box, yep. yeah. I don't know if it's every Magic Punch box or if it's... Oh, there are only three in the game, so... Are there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's one in Monkey Madness as well. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, this boss is one of the major luck components of this run. So you can lose up to 30 seconds just from doing nothing. So that's uh, one of two attacks that he can do. He can either do a red attack or a blue attack. And the red attack is faster uh, by around six and a half seconds. Uh, the blue attack that he does, hopefully you don't get to see it, but uh, he, he essentially just shoots some UFOs at you and they just fly around for a while, you know, try to hit you. But since we're outside of this little black line here, uh, only one of them can actually come hit us, so. Yeah, the first one homes in on you, but then the other three just kind of bounce between that box, not knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. So we just shoot one of them down, and then uh, the rest of them can do whatever they want. So we're getting wow. super, super nice. good luck. Yeah, Already nice. way better than one. Yeah, this more, is, one this is very nice. Four oh reds! Wow, oh, yeah, right, nice. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, there's the two different types of attacks, as far as we know, is a coin toss, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just we like, have not yeah, found we, anything. Yeah. Um, so that's still pretty rare that you get four in a row. Now right here, there's actually a bit of RNG manipulation that Enob's doing. Um, basically, he's standing in this sort of specific spot. Uh, it's, it's not that precise, but right about here. Oh, and then as really soon as the guy starts flying, he starts um, hooping around. And that makes him always go and like fly around, or like fly and open up his button right away. Um, there is a chance, a very low chance, that he can start shooting a bunch more missiles, and then an even lower chance that he can uh, actually basically go back to his first phase, sort of. It's really annoying. It wastes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, with this uh, sort of RNG manipulation strat, it's, it basically prevents that from ever happening. Um, unless you mess up the RNG manip, mm -hmm. then you are forced to get one. And I got the RNG manipulation all four times, so that was yeah. a n that was actually a perfect boss fight because I got all four reds and the RNG nice. manipulation. Yeah. So Pretty perfect. <laughs> Thank you. And that RNG manipulation strat is very new. Like mm -hmm. you only maybe discovered a month it, like, or two. Yeah, yeah I didn't even know two. about it until you just told me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, Saboom actually had the idea for it. Uh, in one of his recent runs, I think it was an 100% run, uh, he suggested the idea that you could manipulate it, and so I just spent like 30, 45 minutes just messing around in that boss fight, just trying to figure it out until I found this setup, which is very nice. So this is by far the longest level in the game. This is the last level in the game, actually. Uh, but we're not done, because we have to go and revisit them. So this is where we actually get a good chance at catching, f at catching the final boss, Spectre, uh, the guy who stole the intelligence helmet. But before we do that, we got to fight all of his minions first. So this is a clown that he must have hired or something. Uh, hold up. And there we go. <laughs> yeah, the concept behind the first half of this stage is that Spectre's kidnapped all of your friends, the professor, Natalie, and also Jake then. And you have to go around to the circus, the haunted house, and then the go-karts area in order to rescue them. So this first one, we're rescuing the professor. And this, um, the clown right here, uh, Eno actually waited for a little bit before hitting him the first time. Uh, and the reason for that is because he actually he has a different attack if you hit him right away. He, he'll sort of start like spawning a bunch of balloons, and he'll be invincible for a little while. And it's just it's a really annoying attack, and you get, you get hit a lot, and it wastes a lot of time. And, but yeah, if you just wait for him, he'll always just start rolling towards you, and you can just shoot him with a bunch of explosives, and it's mm -hmm. really fast. So. Yeah. That clown fight is... I actually really like it. It's got some fun, some fun stuff in it. <laughs> Almost fell there. So this monkey, I don't know why I have to catch him. He's just over here having a good time at the arcade. <laughs> but I, I, it makes me feel bad, but I really do have to. Because who knows? I mean, he's got that intelligence helmet, so he might take over the world someday. So this is, uh, this is the only auto-scroller in the game. It's going to last around two minutes. Uh, so now would be a good time for donations. <clears throat> All right, we have $50 from Nick Mizzle who says, your dad and I are watching and he couldn't be more proud and your thumbs are epic. Happy birthday and good luck to you and all the runners. 
A $10 from Anonymous, who says, Ape Escape is one of my favorite childhood games. Best of luck to the runner. I really hope your thumbs are okay afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game has a lot of thumb movement on the right side. We have $200 from Anonymous, who says, Ape Escape introduced my family to the wonder of analog sticks. <laughs> Yeah, uh, quick thing about this game. This game was, its main advertising point was that it was the first game to require the use of both analog sticks. So that was a really big selling point for it back in the 90s. Yo, shout out to Chin Shreds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, I guess, a tradition that uh, Skate Man started in his run back in 2013, where we have to obviously do the coaster with our chin, because who wouldn't? So I'm actually going to... I. I'm actually going to take a hit or two on purpose here. I'm going to pretend that that one was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it's faster to death abuse for the haunted house, which is coming up in a second. Very spooky, I know. And uh, so if I mess up, then I'll have the opportunity to death abuse, which is slightly faster. So. This monkey can give you some trouble sometimes. All right, yeah, he's fine. I was kidding about that. So one random thing, uh, those doors, if you just saw it, Spike randomly like clipped through the door. Um, those doors, when they're moving, they aren't solid. So you can j literally just walk right through them. <laughs> as long as they're moving. If they yeah. aren't moving, uh, then they're obviously just normal doors. Oh, uh, maybe. Oh, nice. 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 So that area is very luck based. Uh, if the if the monkeys see you in the wrong order, they'll jump into coffins, and you won't be able to catch them all at the same time. And that's why I had one uh, one cookie, which is your life, uh, because then if he jumps in the coffin, uh, an enemy will come out and immediately kill me and respawn me at the beginning of the room, which saves quite a bit over having to wait for him yeah. around 10 seconds or so. Those three are also the last monkeys in the haunted house, and it takes a long time to get out, so it's faster to pause and exit mm -hmm. and then re-enter the level. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, this is, uh, this is uh, Jake. This is our friend with the blue hair, Jake. Uh, this is the first time you're actually required to fight him. And this is kind of your final confrontation with him. Because uh, his mind has been taken over by Spectre. And so he's just being controlled to attack us. Whoa. So, so yeah. yeah normally, normally this uh, fight is actually supposed to take five cycles. He's supposed to drive at you five times, and then you hit him once. But uh, by actually pinning him into the corner there, you can, I guess, sort of like reset his um, his invincibility frames or something, and like they just don't exist. And so you can just keep hitting. Well, they exist for a little bit, but you can just keep hitting him and kind of stun lock him. All right, okay. Nice. <laughs> so <laughs> another thing, scary. yeah, another thing, that loading zone right there, it's, I think it's the only one in the entire game. There is a chance that the game can sort of like soft lock or crash where basically it it'll, lock. yeah, it's a hard lock where basically <laughs> it'll just start playing random audio from cutscenes earlier in the game uh, or even later and mm. there's nothing you can do about it and it basically just means your run is dead. <laughs> yeah, it's, we it's have really a safety rare, save but, just in case that happened. Yeah, but, but uh, it's, it's very rare. I've had it happen maybe three times, I think. I've had it tw twice, I think. I've had it a couple of times, yeah. Yeah. And it, it seems to mostly only happen really on worse discs. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I have a disc back home that has a ton of scratches on it. It's many, many years old. It's the disc I started running this game on, and it happens almost every time when I use that disc, so it's super fun. I don't use that disc anymore. <laughs> so this monkey, uh, you're supposed to go around and shoot a button by that Spectre coin over there. Uh, but uh, you can actually jump out of bounds, not out of bounds, but uh, and you can skyfly over to him, but then you can't see, so I, do, I like to switch the camera and then also get punched in the face. So uh, coming up are two very difficult monkeys. This essentially turns into Call of Duty for a second That's because I gotta shoot these guys down. Uh, they can give you one of three patterns. Uh, they spawn very quickly, which is good. and. Uh, uh, hopefully they give me one where they just fly in circles, but uh, so this guy gave me a good pattern. He also shot me, which is fun, but yeah, 
So, and then once they're out of the UFOs, they become beasts and they just want to wreck your day. Oh no, I may have come a little too close there. Yeah, so the other, or one of the other patterns that you can get is really random. Like, he'll just start bouncing around in random directions. It makes it really hard to hit him. Uh, and the other really dumb thing about th those UFO monkeys is sometimes their hitbox can actually desync from their model, and so you actually have to, like, aim at a different spot than when you're supposed to. Uh, and it's, it's, yeah, it's really annoying. So uh, what I was trying to do there is uh, get an early cycle with this uh, car, which is kind of difficult, not super difficult, but uh, it does save a couple seconds. And there is a very difficult trick you can do to uh, not have to do that, that uh, B-Man found. But uh, I, for safety's sake, I don't go for that because I'm not very good at it. Yeah, basically what you, you would do for that strat is you would jump off of the moving platform underneath the wall and then use the Sky Flyer up on the other side. But it's pretty precise and you die if you fail, so... So, does somebody want to explain what I just did there? Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> do you want to? Uh, sure. Right. The, uh, so, basically, what you're supposed to do for the entirety of Monkey Madness is you have to go on this huge, long platforming section to hit this button at the very end. Uh, like, it's way high up, and it's really, really hard, especially without IJs, but... Um, Basically, when you hit that button, it raises this picture of Spectre that's in his castle, and behind it is the loading zone for the final boss. But if you go around onto the other side of it, you, the, like, the loading zone for it extends into the other room, but like so high up that you shouldn't be able to reach it. So by infinite jumping into it, we can just completely skip the entirety of Monkey Mad or the second half of Monkey Madness, basically. So this boss is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yes. this, is, this is the main reason uh, why people get angry at this game. Uh, this boss... He has like four or five attacks that he can it's do, four. that uh, <laughs> and he just kind of does them randomly. We haven't figured out any way to really manipulate him to yes. do a different attack. Uh, yeah. And there's one attack that he can do that we can attack him after, which you have not seen yet. That's right there here. There it is. Yeah. yeah. So we kind of just have to wait for him to do that four times, uh, and you lose about five seconds every time he does something else. Uh, yeah. That's really. This is really the only major, major luck component of the run, besides uh, the TV Tower boss, which is. Not as big of a deal, but definitely still a big deal. Yeah, the only rule of governing this fight that we know of is that he can't do the same attack twice in a row. Unless he's missing an arm that he would need to do it, then he can do the same attack twice in a row. So the best you can get is a five cycle. Yep. Yeah, the purple lasers, I think, are the only ones that he can do twice in a row. Because with a five cycle, I think he... Yeah, because he would, he would do it twice in a mm -hmm. row with that. Yeah. But that's pretty rare. I've only ever gotten two five cycles, I think. So after this fight, uh, we're gonna be. This is this would be the end of the any percent run after you beat this boss because he is the final boss. But uh, since we have to catch all of the monkeys, we have to go back through the the game again, and it's not gonna take as long the second visit. But and this specter yep. luck. Yeah, yeah, I haven't been no. counting, but uh, this is. Quite a high number, I'd yeah. say. <laughs> yeah, I think you're probably on probably like in the 20s. I would 16 say 16 or something yeah, right I now. Think. It's somewhere around there. It's a larger number than five, that's for sure. <laughs> so this is this is not usual. This is pretty rare to yeah. get luck this bad, but uh, it's alright. See, so yeah, once he loses both of his arms, he goes into I guess his last phase where he's going to shoot a few, or like he's going to shoot a shot at you. It, it will it will basically get rid of the floor. Uh, and then you can just kind of hit him after his button opens up. Uh, it'll do that twice, and then you can, uh, the last time he'll shoot twice, so you kind of have to play that properly. Um, <laughs> I'm just messing around. None of this is required. I've never actually tried doing that before. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of like, I don't know, something's weird about his hitbox. He just kind of bounces you off. So this is the end of the any percent run right here. So that would have been a 53 something, any percent. But uh, now we get to go back and do the entire game again. Yes. So uh, now is the credits. So now would be a good time to read donations. Yep. And we got quite a few people showing some love for Apescape. So um, 
We got $50 from the other gym. Ape Escape is one of my favorite runs to watch. Since he's been catching all the monkeys with his net, I've got to put this to saving the animals. <laughs> uh, we have $50 from Fleur Gandy, who says, Good luck on the run, Eatnob, and thanks for the shout out, man. Also, hi, Horn and Sportsman. I'm glad to be a part of the Ape speedrun community with you guys. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Let's a little water. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We have $25 from Zippy Meister, who says the lineup of games this year is pretty bananas, but I'll stop monkeying around and give this towards the Mirror's Edge Easter egg. <clears throat> All right, we have $20 from Anonymous and Wish Me Luck here, who says, oh boy, um, Nima. Nim Pneumonia Ultra Microscopics Illy Covolcano Conososis. I know that was wrong, but also shout outs to the host Rib Killa, that's me, who loves motorcycles. Yes, I do love motorcycles. All right, we have $50 from Juan Chomp, who says, it's once again Ape Escape's time to shine. And as a monkey enthusiast, you know I have to get in on that action. Here's 50 towards the doggo ending of Silent Hill 2. We'll add $5 for each person on the couch who can pronounce the name Rystar correctly, because internet people have been saying it wrong for far too long. I hope I also didn't say it wrong. Rystar? I mean, that's how you just I said it. That's how I would say it. That's how I would say it, too. Sure so Rystar. hopefully we got it right. Rystar, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what else? Is that Ristar? <laughs> yes, I was thinking Ristar, too. But we'll find out, I guess. Uh, we have $10 from Anonymous, who says, Thanks to everyone for this amazing week. GDQ is my favorite thing to put on while working on arts. Good luck to all the runners. This is a bit of love for the Shovel Knight bonus run tomorrow. We have $50 from Harambe, who says, following GDQ since year one from France, and it's my first donation. Ape Escape was one of my best game I played on PS1, so I have to donate on this run. Good luck to Eatnob and save the animals. Huh? Where's the piece for There's $50 from Echo Abrams, who says, I've donated to every GDQ for the last four years. Keep up the great work for a great cause. There's $20 from Teleperian206, and it's in a different language, so <laughs> here we go. Uh, uni donation por si gran jo de falcom et merci a tutti organization et les runners por sit envert and Entertainment. <laughs> Sounded good to me. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Proud of you. Give a clap <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> all right, so the credits are over now. Uh, oh. And the first time that you re enter a level uh, after you've beaten the game, you get thrown into this training room right here. This is for the magic punch. This is the last gadget in the game that uh, you get in the post game. And uh, basically, it's just this big boxing glove on a spring. And it's, uh, it's pretty useful, uh, especially in time attacks. It's used all the time in time attacks. Oh. Uh, that guy was out to get me. So this gadget is essentially going to replace the stun club in 99% of all scenarios for the rest of the game, because it's just a better version of it, essentially. Because it has longer range, it does more damage, it's just better in almost every way. So it'll make this room a bit easier because I have the range to attack this guy. Uh, this guy, he's a fun guy. He likes to shoot you and such. Uh, Alright, so 
I did miss the one cycle. You can catch all of these guys in one cycle, but uh, it's a little bit precise because you just have to be able to be a sniper. That room is fairly difficult uh, in most situations just because all of those monkeys are very, very aggressive. Uh, I think the highest ranked monkey in the game, which monkeys actually do have ranks that you can look up. Oh, yeah, I forgot about uh, The that. highest ranked monkey in the game, I'm fairly certain, is uh, one of the ones in that room. And all of the others are almost equally high, highly ranked. So we're going to use the magic punch uh, for the first time in a required location here. Because uh, there are these boxes uh, littered throughout the game. I think Horn said there were three of them. Yeah, three. Mm -hmm. uh, that you can only open by punching them with the magic punch. And like most monkeys, this monkey doesn't exist for a second, so I just shoot, uh, I just hit that guy for a second, just to waste time. And sometimes he drops uh, pellets, so. So right here, this is uh, the area that you would normally go to uh, when doing the, the game casually, instead of going and doing the infinite jump to the boss loading zone. Uh, so yeah, we'll get to see that area. It's just, it's faster to do it later so that we don't have to backtrack through the entire level again. Uh, just to get back to the boss. Mm -hmm. So this is, coming up here is a monkey that used to be called Devil Monkey because he was so hard. Uh, I've been trying to tell people that he's not hard. He's but, hard, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm hard, it's hard to convince people. So I'll try to display that he's not hard here, but uh, no promises. <laughs> So that's what nice. that's what How the new strap is. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute magic. So that monkey, he used to be super hard because we would use the RC car. Where's the? Okay, <laughs> I, I forgot where the uh, hole in the hole in the floor was there for a second. But uh, we used to use the RC car to catch that guy, uh, which is very very difficult. And trying to catch him with the RC car, I would say, is worthy of the name Devil Monkey. Yeah. But uh, using the Using nothing but your body to lure him out uh, is much, much, much more consistent. No, I've definitely, during all monkeys runs, I've lost like upwards of four minutes on him yep. just because of him trolling me for that long. Yeah, he, when he runs, he really runs. Yeah. So this area of the game is actually one of the most fun areas in my oh opinion. Oh my gosh, yes. It's, it, especially when doing it glitchless. It's, it's really difficult, but it's super satisfying to pull it off. And it's, it's just this huge platforming section, but it's, it's so fun. So this is the last monkey in the level. And then we're going to get to what I consider the hardest trick in the game. Uh, it's fairly new. Uh, it's within the last year it came out, uh, but we're gonna try to catch a monkey uh, in a very, very unintentional way. So you will see that in a second. Uh, we'll be going back to TV Tower, which is where we fought the second to last uh, boss fight against Spectre. So, yeah, you could read a donation. All right, we have $10 from Amor, who says, grew up playing Ape Escape, even enjoyed Ape Escape 3. I love seeing it broken with a slingshot jump. Keep up the good work, everyone. Okay, so this is another one of those uh, monkeys that doesn't exist for a second. As you can see, I swung the net and it did not catch him because uh, his hitbox just doesn't exist for a second there. He doesn't really do anything, though, so it's not a big deal for him. So this is the... This is a monkey that, uh, if he sees you, he kind of just wrecks you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this is the what I consider the hardest area of the game. It's only going to last like 15, 20 seconds, but uh, I definitely consider this the hardest, the hardest trick in this run. So I am going to not talk for a sec. Not that. It'll come up in a sec. <laughs> All right, it's uh, this catch right here. All right. Nice. Uh, so what I did there, uh, that's a new setup, kind of. Uh, so that monkey, 
you're supposed to ride that elevator that I rode to catch the first two monkeys in that area all the way down to get him, which actually doesn't take super, super long. Probably takes like 10, 15 seconds. But uh, what we do is we jump behind the elevator and uh, we catch him from behind. And that doesn't sound too hard, but the reason why it's hard is because there's fans that are blowing you, but their hitbox doesn't exist behind the elevator. So you can actually jump behind the wind hitbox there and catch the monkey just like that. And it's very fun. Definitely lost runs to that before. Yeah, so explosive pellets are going to be nice in these couple revisits because there's a couple monkeys that will jump in vehicles like large tanks or UFOs whenever they see you. And some of them are dangerous to approach without it. But if you stun them with an explosive first, it makes them completely free to catch. So now is the mini boss that I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So this guy, uh, he's actually a lot harder to fight with the magic punch than he is with the stun club. Because getting quick hits on him with the magic punch is very difficult. You gotta be very quick because uh, you can't actually move. Getting one quick hit with the uh, magic punch is actually very good because uh, usually I get zero, but that's okay. And also the thing about the magic punch is that he actually only takes uh, four hits to die with the magic punch rather than the usual, I think, five. So it definitely saves time. Let's use the magic punch there. Woo. <laughs> I got kind of caught on his uh, hitbox there for a sec. So this next area, uh, I really like the revisit in this next area, but uh, there are two luck-based monkeys. One of them not so much, but the first one, uh, he, we're essentially going to try to catch him through a cage, and he can do as many animations as he wants. He can just kind of sit there and sneeze all over and over. He can look around, and he can just wait all he wants. But uh, Usually he only does somewhere between 0 and 3, but uh, we've seen as much as 11 before, so. So that was perfect luck, where he does absolutely nothing and just walks right into your net, because he's super nice. So the next monkey that is uh, basically luck-based is not this guy. This guy is just mean. Uh, is coming up here. It's a monkey we are required to use the RC car for, as far as I know. I've never f found any way to catch him without using yeah, the RC think car. You can avoid it. Mm. That's not what I am going to do. So uh, essentially, he can run around in circles if he wants. Uh, if he's nice, he'll do that. I got it real quick. So that's. That's, that was pretty good luck there. That's just him running straight out. But he, if he wants to, he can just run in circles for 20 seconds or so. I don't even know. Something like that. So coming up now, we're going to have a couple of uh, really, really short revisits, like 10 seconds each. So if you want, now would be a good time for donations. Sure. <clears throat> have $25 from Perry Dodo, who says, Always excited about GDQ. Please keep doing what you do for these great causes, especially in uncertain times. Kindness needs to be shared. Greetings to my dingus husband and to my horse friends who are watching me. We have $150 from Anonymous. Thank you, Anonymous. Um, $15 from Million Sandwiches 72 who says, from my good pal Cassie, did you know Ape Escape 2 was actually a different game in Japan named Saru Saru Panic? $10 from Shane who says, just want to say a big thanks to all the gamers there. Such a good cause and me and my fiance are loving it. Oh, yeah, kill the animals. $25 from Fake P Zero Me. Who says, first game I ever beat as a kid. I'm loving the speed run. Brings back so many memories. I actually never beat this game as a kid. I was not nearly skilled enough. <laughs> and look at you now. <laughs> I can almost beat the game now. Yes. 
So coming up next, uh, we're going to revisit Sushi Temple again. And there are a couple monkeys in this level that are super, super fun. Uh, I do love this revisit. There's some very interesting movement in it. Uh, we're essentially going to go around in a triangle and catch some monkeys in some fun ways. And this is the, we're going to revisit the area we would go to for any percent. And uh, we're going to catch all of them. Because you got to catch them all. Sorry about that. It's funny you say that because we have a don $300 donation from Buggin uh, Arug, who says, gotta catch them all. <laughs> These two monkeys in the red UFOs gave me heck as a kid. Obviously, we gotta catch them all. Whoa, that monkey. Uh, well, I, don't, I don't know what happened to his texture there. That was weird. <laughs> Just half of him didn't exist for some reason. No big deal. Oh, that guy kind of did it too. Something's up with the rafters. We have $50 from San, who says, My wife and I are big fans of the event, and this year's special. We have our first baby on the way, which we named Monkey, who will do its own ape escape soon. So this donation goes out to him or her, Little Monkey Hype. <laughs> Hype? I'm going for it. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I love it when he does that. <laughs> Whoa. Skyflyer didn't That's activate so for a second there. So that guy, yeah, uh, he does have random positioning, but uh, it's essentially we can just do that if he if he gives us bad positioning. But uh, that is not at all what he usually does. Do does does. <laughs> so this area of the game is actually a really annoying part. You have to normally you're supposed to. Well, what is it? You have to like hit a bunch of. Uh, uh, I think there aren't there polar bears. Polar bears. There are, like polar yeah. bears that you have yeah. to do something. Like you have to sort of like lure them into a position mm -hmm. and hit them, and it's with ice physics, mm -hmm. yeah. so that they like go and break down the walls and whatnot. And ice physics in this game are like really hardcore ice physics. Yeah. Like you just slide all over the place. So it's it's really nice that we have those out of bounds there to just get through it quickly. Mm -hmm. it makes it so much easier. If you have the magic punch, you can break down the walls with the magic punch, but you're not intended to have the magic punch there, I don't think, yet. So. Usually you would have to just smack the polar bears and slide them into the cage, which is fairly difficult. So there's another double catch here, if I am good. Uh, there's these two monkeys in the igloo, which you could see there for a second. Hopefully I can catch them in one sweep. It's not too hard, but uh, but it's pretty fun. So now, after this, we have the shortest revisit in the game, uh, Snowy Mammoth, which I previously said was my favorite level in this game. Only has one monkey in it to catch. But uh, he does have three seconds of variation, just in case. Uh, he can jump into his igloo if he wants to. Uh, it's actually, that's what he usually does, and it's very rare for him not to jump into his uh, igloo. So I got the normal luck. So I just gotta wait for him. Yes. So uh, uh, next up is I I don't want to say it's luck based because technically it's not luck based because uh, you can manipulate it and it's just very hard. It's hard enough where I would say it's borderline luck. Uh, but this is Dexter's Island coming up next and. Uh, there is a, another monkey that we have to use the RC car to catch uh, that is very, very difficult. So I'm hoping that I get perfect luck slash not luck. But if I don't, I'll have to just like stand there for a couple seconds and wait for him to run out. This part right here by the, this boat here is also, I think, probably the laggiest part of the game. 
Whoa. <laughs> oh, <what's laughs> oh no, I, I accidentally switched gadgets. <laughs> so this monkey just likes to run around. You can just kind of wait for him to come around. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Maybe? Yeah. All right. yeah, this area is laggy. That's why I dropped an infinite jump at the beginning there, which is why I fell in the water. Uh, usually I would have just infinite jumped on top of him and just jumped and caught him, but uh, I failed an infinite jump, so I just fell in the water. So this is the monkey that I'm talking about. So this monkey, uh, you're required to use the RC car, and there is a setup, which I'm doing right now, uh, but it is definitely not 100% consistent. I'd say it's around 50-50. That monkey's very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this room right here with uh, all this pink stuff is also pretty annoying because if you hit those big, uh, like those things coming out of the ground, you actually like get a boost in the opposite direction, and so it's kind of hard to maneuver around that area. What are, where are you going? <laughs> oh, <weird. laughs> Oh, jeez. Where is he? Somewhere around here. Yeah, so that's not what I intended. I was, after I went back into that pink area with all the uvula things or whatever, uh, and then came back out, he was supposed to be just standing there waiting for me to catch him, but uh, sometimes you just gotta stand there and wait for him to run out, and then if you do that, then he can choose where he wants to jump into the water. So that wasn't too, too bad. I've seen much worse. This is one of my favorite revisits. It's pretty much just the beginning of the any percent route, basically, but uh, I just love the movement in this level. Let's go! I'm not saying it's hard or anything. It's uh, very short and sweet, but uh, I'm a fan. Yeah, most of the revisits from this point on are just going to be really quick, with the exception of, I think, Thick Jungle. Oh, and Dark, Dark Runes, Runes, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those but two Most are... of the rest are just going to be quick, less than a minute. Because mm -hmm. there's not too many monkeys in any of them besides those two. And those are two of the very, very long levels at the beginning. And uh, Thick Jungle, usually there was a catch that I did earlier that we talked about, uh, that if you don't get it, we would catch him on the revisit the one next to the UFO, but uh, luckily I did catch him on the first visit, which means that I don't have to catch him on the revisit, which is super nice. Because if you have to catch him on the revisit, it's just the same as catching him on the first visit. There are no gadgets that you have that can really help you. These crabs are fun. Sometimes you like to slip on them like banana peels. Whoop, not what I intended to do. This catch, uh, this guy, if you don't catch him like that, then you have to uh, shoot him down while he's in a UFO. You can also use an explosive on him. That's, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that way can you? just as well. Yeah, yeah, you explosive him and then boost jump over and hit oh. to him. Yeah. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> I never even thought to do that. I've just always done the, I think I saw Saboom do it once where you just do the four infinite jumps, bump up against the wall, and mm -hmm. then you just drop on him. Which is, it's, it's consistent enough, so. Yeah, it works. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it worked there, so. We'll pretend that it always works. So, uh, Cryptic Relics, another pretty fun but short revisit. Uh, we're just gonna do a couple pretty, pretty cool catches here. Uh, the first one, we're just gonna infinite jump over to catch him, but the second one, uh, the second one is called the Eel Catch. And even in All Monkeys, we do have to do it. But uh, we're essentially gonna do a blind drop down and just catch him through the wall. So. Uh, I may have messed up. <laughs> Fortunately, on the revisit here, you do have the magic punch, so you can just get right into here. Yeah. In any percent, mm -hmm. it's a lot more of a time waste. Because mm -hmm. you can't go back and catch him. That purple guy was about to attack me. Yeah, that's probably my favorite catch of the game, the old catch. Yeah, it's yeah. super cool. Yeah. That one's been around for ages. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Greg and LP for that name. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. I never knew that. So, coming up next, uh, another really hard revisit. Uh, there are 
just everything in this level is hard, and there's a little bit of lag everywhere. But uh, this one is another one of the kind of long ones. It takes about two and a half minutes. Uh, but there, there is a mini boss, kind of, that you have to fight here, and then you just have to go all over the place. So the next two levels are going to be fairly difficult. And then after that, it's uh, a bit easier until the final boss. And then the final boss is fairly difficult as well. So we're almost done. Gotta wait on the elevator. I wish there was elevator music, but I don't <laughs> know This is kind of like there. elevator music. <laughs> Close yeah, enough. It's, it's pretty good. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's not elevator music. That monkey that he just caught right there, if he moves out of the way, it's kind of yeah, annoying to catch he him. He jumps across. And, yeah, it's he's one of the fast monkeys, I think. So yeah, and I is. think he is almost the same speed as you are with the with the super hoop. So catching him is very difficult. Yeah. And if he gets away, it makes a monkey that we catch later harder too. Yeah. <laughs> nice action pose there. Thanks, man. <laughs> This guy so this is monkey. another guy. He doesn't exist for like a really long time. <laughs> yeah, so we have to uh, essentially wait for him to get out of the coffin. You can catch him as he's jumping out, but uh, the fact that it took him so long to see me meant that uh, his animations were off. Nah, I tried to start my hoop before I fell off the edge there. That is an intentional death abuse that we spawn back up here and don't have to climb back through. Got some laggy infinite jumps here. Nice. Nice. <laughs> that guy's fun. If you uh, if you miss him, you just kind of have to go down that slide and uh, catch him again. And when you're at the bottom. It's very fun for Spike, I bet, because he gets to go down a little slip and slide, but I'd rather not. Not really in the mood right now. So now uh, we have the last hard uh, revisit. Uh, and then after this, it's pretty much smooth sailing till the final boss. But uh, this one, uh, this is Thick Jungle, where we had that uh, ufo list catch. So we're going to have to go all over this level. We're going to have to enter almost every room, all of them besides one, yeah, all of them besides one. So we're gonna have to travel all over the place. And I am going to do a little safe strat on the next monkey because uh, he's similar to the tree monkey that we fought in the first one, except he actually exists before he gets in his tree. So we can shoot him with an explosive. While with the previous one, we weren't able to do that. But uh, this ledge is fun. So, I've died there many times because that ledge is, I don't know, something about it is weirdly designed that makes it fairly difficult. That was an intentional death abuse, so we can come back to the beginning of this room. And then we'll go and catch this guy. And then normally, if we hadn't caught uh, the ufo list monkey, we would come in here to catch the ufo list monkey. But uh, since I did catch him, we can just skip him and uh, catch the monkey that I skipped. Because uh, if you do catch him, you just skip a different monkey, which is this one right here. And then we go back. And that is not the fastest route. There is a faster route where you can rely on catching uh, UFO lists, but uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's marathon safe. Uh, others would disagree, but I would say it's not marathon safe, so I don't do it. This is the room I was talking about with the uh, boat and the electric fish earlier. Uh, we're not going to take the boat because uh, we don't really need to. We don't need to go that far with it. But uh, the, the boat and the electric fish you will get to see, I think. So there's the boat and there's the electric fish. He shocks the entire water around you, so he's actually fairly dangerous. And that's the last hard level. So now we just got three easy levels in a row. So uh, now would be a good time for donations, actually. Sure. Uh, $20 from 
Ahmeds, who says, Ape Escape and Mega Man Legends were my childhood games. Unforgettable gems. Stay awesome, all you gosh dang fast joggers. Oh, and $20 goes to the secret doggo ending in Silent Hill 2 because he doesn't love doggos in video games? Uh, $20 from Anonymous says, It's nice to see Marathon Infinity in the list. Hopefully more old Mac-only games will eventually be added. Uh, $50 from Mephi, who says, I watch SGDQ clips every night before I go to bed. Games getting destroyed with precision is way better than ASMR. Now let's get that doggy in <laughs> Hopefully that ASMR was good for you as well. Um, $20 from Anonymous, who says, Haven't been able to watch the streams due to other commitments, but I wanted to donate anyway. Putting it all towards Nissan Dorma after Ratchet and Clank. Let your inner Pavarotti shine. So with this Triceratops mini-boss, I guess, there is a bit of a fast strat you can do where if you position yourself just in front of him, uh, you can get hit by him, and then he'll sort of keep pushing you forward, and so you'll stay in front of him, so you can just hit the bombs back right away. Uh, but it's a little bit precise. Mm -hmm. I did miss it on the second hit there, but getting two out of three is pretty good. So, yeah. And that's the only uh, hard thing left, besides the final boss, which is one of the harder things in this game. Time for a quick donation. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. Cool. All right. $25 from Juan Chomp, who says, Annoyingly missed my message being read because I was AFK for dinner, but I'm going to assume Sad. that everyone on the couch gave Rystar the correct pronunciation, which is Ristar, Ooh. not Rystar, oh. so we were wrong. Oh. Wow. And wow. donate the full 25, I promise. Well, thanks anyways. That is what everyone said, right? Glares intensely <laughs> like a peepo monkey with green pants. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. Well, that's sad. I thought we were right. Yeah, that's. I, mm. I've always thought it was that way. Yeah, yeah me too. Well, now we know. Now we're we smarter know. because of it. And knowing's half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the last revisit, and then we're just gonna go straight to the final boss. Uh, this one, possibly even shorter than Snowy Mammoth. It, definitely, it is. definitely it is. Snowy. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> So, we have one monkey to catch, and he's just right, yeah, he's basically <laughs> in front of us to the right. This is the first level, so it's obviously going to be pretty, pretty small. And you can actually, you're intended to use the sky flyer to get to that monkey, but you can actually do it completely without the sky flyer. You can just jump up there from the hill, over to the side, using the neutral double jump, which I think Horn explained earlier. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we've caught all the monkeys in the game, besides the the important one, which is uh, Spectre. So we're going to go give it our all, try our best to catch him, and then we're all done. So uh, timing's not quite yet, but it'll be coming up in around two minutes. Uh, it's after I catch Spectre, so I'll have to hit him a couple times, and then after that, I'll just, I'll just give you a countdown mm -hmm. and then say when. Does Spectre himself actually count towards the monkey total? I can't remember. I, don't I have no I, idea. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. No? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are there 206, 204? There are 204 monkeys. I guess there's, there's 204 monkeys in the game, but he would make 205 if you counted them. Okay, so that's not what I wanted. So you can hit him early here, but uh, you actually don't want to hit him early the first two times, and then the third time you want to hit him early there because it'll save 10, 15 seconds. So this time I don't want to hit him early, but if I, if I can, I will, obviously. All right. So as long as he lets me hit him early on the next on the next cycle, then it was very good luck because the last cycle is the one that matters the most. Because then, if we can hit him early, that means he's not going to do that blue orb explodey thingy attack. So let's hope he does it. All right. Of so <laughs> that's the worst luck you can get. Uh, it loses around 15 seconds. Not huge deal. I may have taken a hit there. Don't worry about it. And we have to wait to hit him there. I didn't wait long enough. <laughs> So uh, here, uh, I'm going to try to stun lock him by not allowing him to move. It's not too hard, but... Uh, and then I have to avoid these pink balls that turn into green balls. Or I can just get hit, that's fine too. And if you hit, try to hit him too quickly, then, uh, then you'll just get smacked in the face because uh, you can't hit him that early.
So the fourth hit is the one that uh, takes the longest. All right, I'm doing well on health. It is actually definitely possible to die on this boss. Is this the last hit? Or? Uh, yes, I believe so. Get ready. And, and oh, nope, oh. not the last hit. Never no, mind. One oh, more. One more. Okay. I said. All right. See, I get ready on time. <laughs> All right, so this is the last hit. Time. time. Woo! Nice. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, so, uh... That was world record, by the way. <laughs> but uh, the previous world record was 128.45, uh, and that was set last week or something like that. But yeah, that was a really good run. I had a great time. Uh, if you guys want to give some quick shout outs, go for it. Uh, anybody? Oh, I mean, again, a big shout out to Flurgundy for providing yeah, the. Yeah, definitely. The Biggest shout out to Flurgundy. And the, and the actual game. Yep. And. Uh, Thank you to everybody who helped with this run. Uh, there were tons of people throughout the years of this game who have contributed to the route, and uh, I'm just so glad that all of them helped make this game what it is today. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much. And did you want to say something? Yeah. Okay, just use one. Uh, if anyone is interested in running Ape Escape, I recommend going to the speedrun.com page uh, for Ape Escape and looking for uh, like any of the runners here on the couch, uh, we're more than happy to help you if you're interested. Yeah, for sure. Yep, definitely. Yeah. So thank you so much. That's Ape Escape. Thank you guys all for watching.